So the question of democratic socialism inevitably came up at last night's debate. And um, look, I've long maintained that I don't actually think this is going to hurt Bernie Sanders as bad as mainstream pundits believe it will or are saying that it will. Because, I mean, it doesn't matter who the nominee is. It could be Joe Biden, Amy Klobuchar, Pete Buttigieg, whoever wins Donald Trump is going to say that they're socialist. This is what Republicans do. This is what they've always done. And John McCain, back in 2008, can you guess what he called Obama? A socialist. So it doesn't matter who the nominee is. They're automatically going to be labeled a socialist because that's what Republicans do. But an advantage in actually identifying as a democratic socialist is being able to control the narrative. Not saying, no, I'm not. Because voters who are worried about socialism, they're not going to believe you if they're going to vote Republican and they truly believe the lies about you being socialist. So if you actually are a socialist, you can control the narrative to an extent and take it back and say, well, sure, I'm a socialist, but this is what I mean by socialism. It's not that scary, is it? But tonight, I'm willing to say that Bernie Sanders being a democratic socialist is actually going to be an advantage for him, possibly. Because the way that he handled that tonight was so masterful, so brilliant, that... If he's successful here, if he could be the nominee and beat Donald Trump, like, we could possibly see other Democrats call themselves Democratic Socialists going forward, because this is how you do it. So he was asked about Democratic Socialism. Watch the way that he handled this question like a boss. Uh, Senator Sanders, our latest NBC News Wall Street Journal poll released yesterday, two-thirds of all voters said they were uncomfortable with a socialist candidate for president. What do you say to those voters, sir? What was the result of that poll? Who was winning? Yeah. The questions, questions to you. Well, the question was that I was winning, and I think by a fairly comfortable margin. Mike mentioned that. But here is the point. Let's talk about democratic socialism, not communism, Mr. Bloomberg. That's a cheap shot. Let's talk about democratic. Let's talk about what goes on in countries like Denmark, where Pete correctly pointed out they have a much higher quality of life in many respects than we do. What are we talking about? We are living in many ways in a socialist society right now. Problem is, as Dr. Martin Luther King reminded us, we have socialism for the very rich, rugged individualism for the poor. Wait a second. When Donald, let me finish. When Donald Trump gets $800 million in tax breaks and subsidies to build, link, to build luxury condominiums, that's socialism for the rich. Wait, when wait Walmart, we have to subsidize Walmart's workers who are on Medicaid and food stamps because the wealthiest family in America pays starvation wages, that's socialism for the rich. This, this is I believe in democratic socialism okay, for no. working people, not billionaires, health care for all, wait, educational wait. opportunity all right, for all, Senator, thank you. creating Mayor a Bloomberg, government like that the, works the for all, was not just Mr. Bloomberg. What a wonderful country we have. The best known socialist in the country happens to be a millionaire with three houses. What did I miss here? Well, you'll miss that I work in Washington, House 1. That's the first problem. Live in Burlington, House 2. That's good. And like thousands of other Vermonters, I do have a summer camp. But, Forgive me for that. But, Where is your home? But, which tax which tax haven New do York, you have your home? New York City, thank you very much. Yeah, and I pay all, all my home. taxes. I'm and I'm happy to do it because I get something for it. And let me say, I thought that the senator next to me was half right. Oh, I agree we should raise taxes on the... No. I disagree with the senator on the wealth tax, but I do agree with her that the rich aren't paying their fair share. We should raise taxes on the rich. I did that as mayor in New York City. I raised taxes. And if you take a look at my plans, the first thing I would do is try to convince Congress, because they've got to do it, we can't just order it, to roll back the tax cuts that the, that the um, uh, uh, Trump administration put in with the, uh, through Congress. Now, let me just say that Mike Bloomberg is a stupid person because he pointed to the senators on the stage as if they were the ones responsible for Trump's tax cut. They didn't vote for that dummy. Try to keep up. Like, what are you trying to say here? Very stupid. Very stupid. And he's a liar, by the way, because he said before that raising taxes on the wealthy is a bad idea or a stupid idea. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but this is a new position that he's taking for purposes of political expediency. So don't believe him. He's stupid. But when it comes to Bernie Sanders responding to that question... Oh, that was brilliant. Like, the look on his face, the command that he took. Who's winning? Who's winning in that poll? Tell me. So you cite that poll, 
but you don't cite the most important part. We're in that same poll where people claim that they don't like socialism. Bernie's winning. It's Bernie. So you can say that that generic democratic socialist label may be a disadvantage to a generic Democrat on these ballots that polls use. But when you put a face to the label and people know what he's talking about, it actually makes a difference. And the way that Bernie Sanders explained what he means by socialism, like, if you argue against this, then you're not going to vote Democrat anyway. Like, this is just things that good people support. Um, he claimed, we're living in a socialist society now. The problem is we have socialism for the rich and rugged individualism for the poor. Channeling Martin Luther King Jr. I mean, brilliant. Just brilliant. To bring up Dr. MLK Jr., when you're talking about socialism, that is really important and it matters because people are familiar with MLK. Even Republicans claim that, you know, they love MLK Jr., uh, even though we know that that wouldn't be the case if he were alive today. But, you know, they all know who MLK Jr. is. So if you quote him and you explain that that's the vision that you have for America, it suddenly becomes a little bit less scary. And Bernie Sanders also said, I believe in democratic socialism for working people, not for billionaires, healthcare for all, educational opportunity for all, creating a government that works for all of us, not just Mr. Bloomberg. Exactly. So when you educate people and you explain that we effectively have socialism for large multinational corporations with all of these corporate subsidies, but you don't get any benefits, you don't get any handouts, handouts for lack of a better word. I mean, we have to change that. We need democratic socialism that doesn't just benefit the wealthy but benefits everyone else like that's gonna land and let's say hypothetically speaking it doesn't land young people don't care about socialism people are enthusiastic about supporting a socialist who are millennials and zoomers why because capitalism is killing them literally it's killing the planet so you can't possibly say with a straight face that that's not going to land in a general election. And anyone who concern trolls about socialism, and they will after this debate, like they're not serious about defeating Donald Trump. Like on that debate stage tonight, what we saw was that there's one person who is strong enough to take on Donald Trump, who's popular enough, who has an answer for everything, who can actually beat Donald Trump. And that's Bernie Sanders. Look, Elizabeth Warren had a great performance, and I think that she could hold her own on a debate stage. But if you really want to win, I mean, Bernie Sanders demonstrated tonight why he's the best person and why he's the front runner. What he's saying is resonating with voters. That's why he's winning. Now, the last thing that I want to uh, touch on there is Bloomberg tried to attack him and said that, you know, he's the socialist with three houses. And he tweeted about this as well because he's really proud of that attack. But Bernie Sanders came in with just oh, a death blow. And he said, which tax haven do you have as your home? Bernie's a beast. That was absolutely brilliant so um kudos to bernie sanders that was phenomenal and if you're worried about socialism hurting bernie sanders and you know you are considering voting for joe biden only because you think he's more electable because he doesn't have that socialist baggage if you will show them that debate clip you don't have to show them my video but just show them that debate clip of bernie sanders and if they have time, if they're interested in learning more, back in 2019, Bernie Sanders did, I think it was like a 45 minute long speech where he talked about democratic socialism. And it was probably one of the best speeches that I've ever heard, if not one of the best. And we have to educate people and let them know that if we truly want to win, we need someone who represents the people and democratic socialists or not. Bernie Sanders has all the right policies. And if you educate them about those policies and what he means when he says he's a democratic socialist, it's no longer scary. You know, it's no longer something that seems foreign or communist. They just get it because what he's saying makes sense. It's going to land. It's going to resonate with people. And it already is.